prayerful prevents so if you don't want to perform poorly prepare well amen how do somebody prepare for communion service maybe that sounds strange to you is it not communion service is it not for us to get together sing some hymn hear some word and take communion why should we prepare it is for that reason that you have not been able to get much out of communion service if you will understand what is in a communion service you will look forward to it with great expectation communion service is not ordinary service it is a power service are you hearing me but you see with everything of god nobody will touch you beyond your level of faith no one will touch you beyond your level of ignorance. And that's why Paul said, concerning, concerning spiritual things, I do not want you to be ignorant. Amen. And God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. There is no service as powerful as communion service. But, but, me saying it to you is not what makes it like that. It is you telling yourself that that makes the difference. That communion service is coming. All right. We are going to have fellowship with the blood of Jesus. And then you equip yourself. You can go to John chapter 6, read the entire chapter. You are building your most holy faith up. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing the word of God. So you build up your faith to the level you will say to yourself, just come into that service. Even before I will take the communion, there will be an outbreaking of miracle in my life. Are you hearing me? There is nothing that the blood cannot change. And communion service is a service of the blood. And anything is changeable, anything is possible. But to him that knows, to him that understands, Praise the Lord. You bring whatever that troubles you to the table. You bring it to the blood. You present it to the blood. Many of us do not understand that. No enemy likes to release what they have conquered and acquired. Did you hear what I just said? No enemy will like to release what they have conquered. In our year of divine conquest, you must, you must recover what has been conquered from you. Whatever it is, wherever it is, it must be your determination that you must conquer what has been taken from you. You must recover it. Because there is no destiny without a Goliath. There is no destiny without a Goliath. And so, if you have not fought a Goliath yet, you have not embarked on your destiny. Did you hear what I just said? Yes, sir. If you have not fought a Goliath yet, it means that you have not come to your destiny. Why? David, David have to overcome Goliath. Are you hearing me? Jesus have to conquer the cross. Are you hearing me? Mordecai has to overcome Haman. Are you hearing me? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And so when we come to the blood, it is time for a change. It is time to conquer. It is time to become who God said that you will be. Did you notice when we read from Joshua chapter 14? Caleb said to Joshua, give me the portion of land that belongs to me. It, is, it was spoken by Moses that that portion will be mine. And, jo and Caleb said, even though I'm 85 years old, give me, just give it to me. Leave the Anakims there. Leave the giants there. They are there. But just say, take it. I will fight them. Are you hearing me? What he was seeking for is an approval. He said, I am 85. 
Just give me. He said, the way my strength was at the age of 40, even so, my strength is lighter than the age of 85. All I need is a word from you. Tell me, Caleb, I give it to you. He said, leave the giants. Leave their fortified city. Are you hearing me? I told you to read the book of Joshua in this year of divine conquest. Because all is in the book of Joshua is about divine conquest. And many of you have not even opened it. You have not started reading it. I encourage you. I encourage you. Read what you are asked to read. In this year of divine conquest, if you are not going to fight by mind or by power, then you need knowledge to activate the spirit. You need knowledge to activate faith. Praise the Lord. If you are not going to fight by mind or by power, then better be equipped by revelation and knowledge. Because my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, said the Lord. Said the Lord. In Joshua chapter 14, verse 12. Caleb said, now give me this here country that the Lord promised me that day. You yourself heard that you heard then that the Anakites were there and their cities were large and fortified. But, but, despite the obstacles, despite the fortress, he says, ah, ah, Praise the Lord. <laughs> he says, the Lord helping me, I will drive them out just as he said. Praise the Lord. Joshua couldn't argue with Caleb. He said, the Bible said, then Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and gave him Hebron as his inheritance. Shout hallelujah. He gave him. He gave him. But he came by the word. He said, the Lord said, that this place will be my portion. This place will be my inheritance. But there are anarchists. There are giants there. And I heard that the place is fortified. It's a fortress. It's difficult to break into it. He said, give it to me. I'm not asking you for army. I'm not asking you for warriors. Give it to me. And the Lord said. And the Lord said, I've taken your sickness and your diseases. And you have not fought back. No, you have not fought to keep what God said is yours. And God said you are blessed. You have not fought to see the blessings manifest. Are you hearing me? And God said no weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. You quote it, but you have not fought it. And Paul said to us, fight the good fight of faith. Do you understand that? Do you understand that all that is given to you, the devil will not release it until you go and fight to take it? And Caleb said, God helping me. God helping me. If God be for us, do you understand that the scriptures will never change? He says, God helping me. And the Bible said, if God be for us. And the Bible said, whatsoever that is born of God. You see, we have a generation of head knowledge. Many Christians can quote the Bible. Many Christians can read through the Bible. You know, people say they've read the, the Bible through every year. That is good. That's commendable. That's commendable. But which part is working in you? No, which part is going through you right now? Amen. I've not read the Bible through in one year. But I can tell you what it has done in me. Through the years. I can tell you what the word of God does in me daily. And so you boast about reading it through. I boast about its accomplishment in my life. Which one is greater? Which one is greater? You read to boast. I read to leave it. A woman came to Jesus and shouted when he saw Jesus and marveled. He said, hey, blessed is the womb that bore you, that gave birth to you. And the breast that nursed you. Jesus said, no, 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 no. Blessed is he that hears the word of God and do it. The woman looked at Jesus and marveled and wanted to give credit to the mother. And Jesus said, no, 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 they credit. The spiritual things, credit does not go in the physical. 
Are you hearing me? Caleb said, Give it to me. I will drive out. Give it to me. And God has given you divine head, but you are molested every day. You, don't you get it? No. You think that God just in comfort 24 by 7. There is no trouble. You, you, know, you know, my people are destroyed because they don't know the scriptures. Jesus said you err because you know not the scriptures. You talk because you know not the scriptures. If only you know the scriptures. Praise the Lord. It is not forbidden for Christians to start a war when you are taking back what belongs to you. Amen. It is not forbidden. Caleb was about to go and start a war. It's not every time you have to wait for the enemy to come and attack you. Sometimes you have to take the war to the enemy. Especially when you are recovering. As a matter of fact, when you find out how you have suffered in the midst of plenty, when you are going to war, you go viciously. Are you hearing me? And yet the weapons of our warfare they are not carnal. When we go, we go viciously. Many of you are weaklings. You are not strong physically. You are not strong in faith. Are you hearing me? Even if you are, even if you are told to fight by mind or by power, what is the strength you have? No, even if they say, okay, okay, it's not a spiritual battle now. It's a physical battle. You will still run away. You will still run away. No, are you hearing me? You will still run away. Yet, what does it take to develop your spiritual power? It takes discipline. It takes what? Discipline. Caleb took the fight to the enemy to recover what belongs to him. He took the fight to the enemy to keep what belongs to him. Open to Revelation 12. Revelation 12. Praise the Lord. Revelation 12. My heart's desire is that you will be so ready for Sunday. You will be so ready. Amen. If anybody is occupying your land on Sunday, they must go. Amen. If there's an occupation in any part of your body, occupation means what is not meant to be there. Occupation means what does not belong there. Are you hearing me? Sickness is an occupation. You see, one of the ways God heals is by your faith. One other way God heals is by his own will. When God chooses to call you a case, praise the Lord. When God, under the anointing, God brings the anointing, the anointing comes. And then anybody the anointing touches gets healed. But there is another part which is more common to us, which God has given to us because the anointing is not there all the time. If anybody said to you that the healing anointing is there all the time, 24 by 7, the person is lying, deceiving himself. When God chooses, God will bring it in. And as he brings it in, as many as he touches, and it can be 5 seconds, it can be 10 seconds, as many, and then people get up from the wheelchair, get healed. But there is another way that God God has given unto us for healing. And that is the way of the woman with the issue of blood. That is the way. He, she heard that Jesus was going to pass her way. She heard. She heard. She said, no, 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 no. This may be the only time Jesus will pass through here. And she said, if only, if only that I would touch. I'm not talking about embracing Jesus. If only I would touch the hem. He's just, she's just talking about the tip of his cloth. If only that whatever touches Jesus will touch me. What a level of faith. What a level of faith. If anything that's connected to Jesus will touch me. She said I will be made whole. 
We are talking about blind Bartimaeus. Jesus was passing by. And he asked them, who is it that's passing by? They say, Jesus. The Bible said that Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus began to scream and shout. They told him to keep quiet. They told him to shut up. He refused to shut up. He refused to keep quiet. He shouted and shouted and shouted. The Bible said, Jesus stood. Anybody can make Jesus stand by their faith. He didn't only stop with blind Bartimaeus. Anywhere there is a cry of faith, Jesus answers it. But we are having a faithless generation. Even the faith is weak. Any little thing you are discouraged. Any little thing you are offended. Any little thing you give up. Any little thing. Eh, let them do. Now is it not God after all? Is it by force? Yes, it is by force. Otherwise you will suffer. Are you hearing me? Our Father in heaven. Did you ever read that war broke out in heaven? Did you ever read that war broke out in heaven? You read it? No, you read it. When was the last time war broke out in you? No. No. When was the last time war broke out? I will show you. Is there. Revelation 12. Verse 7. Then, war broke out in heaven, full stop. <laughs> Amen. War broke out. Like in Hebron. Caleb started a war in Hebron. Because he said, God said, this place will be mine. And so I'm going to take it. I am going to take it. Because the word of the Lord is with me. It's not with the Anakims. The word is with me. If the word be for me, then the word will produce what God says. He says, my word will not return back to me void. God's word is a performer. God's word is what? A performer. But many of you have no faith in the word because you have not built up your faith in the word. You have options. You have options. You have options. Praise the Lord. You have somebody that you can call. I think there was uh, the other day we were talking, I think last week we were discussing, there was something we were talking about mothers and their children. I said, thank God my mother died though. Yes. Thank God my mother died early. Uh, because when you are fighting, you will fight knowing that you have nothing to fall back on. No. Many of you, the problem is that you have somebody that you can always call for a, a, a cold drink or for warm food or where you can carry your things and go and they will keep you there. If nothing else works, you have a place to go to. And so when you fight, you fight with an option. You say, uh, my mom is there. And then your mom calls you every day. How are you? Ah, my son, my son. Take it easy, you. And you are happy. My mother loves you. She is loving you to poverty. Are you hearing me? Those that don't have mother, they say, let me go. If I perish, I perish. But I must become something. No, are you hearing me? No, are you hearing me? Yes, Many of you are over pampered, over spoiled. You have somebody that will send you something here and there. So you, if nothing works, you have somebody that will send something to you. As long as your faith has an option, it will not work. You have Panadol. You have painkillers in your cupboard just in case if the word doesn't work. You might as well take it because the word will not work. Are you hearing me? Take the Panadol. Take the Paracetamol. Ordinary headache. Ordinary pain reliever. But we make exception. When something is life-threatening sickness and disease, and we said, take the prescription because that's a different thing. Till your faith will grow up. Take the prescription. Are you hearing me? We say we encourage people take it and stay alive to grow up your faith. But headache and pain and and the body pain it's, it's not it's not it's not it's not, it's not a terminal situation. Is that not true? And besides, if your faith cannot carry headache, ordinary headache, 
ordinary headache, new creation. New creation. You have come to a point whereby you can even put tablet like this and close your mouth and waka. And it's like mint to you. And there are people that cannot even stand the sight of it. Just take it out. You put your mouth and say, let's go. He said, what? He said, let's go. Is it not? He said, it's not. You have gotten used to it. Amen. Fight the good fight of faith. War broke out. What did God do? No, war broke out in heaven. What did God do? God decided to leave that place. Is that what he did? God decided to go into praying and fasting. No, read your Bible. What happened? Uh, Michael and who? They did what? They fought. They fought against the dragon. Is that your Bible? This is in heaven, no? Heaven is supposed to be a peaceful place. Huh? But that peace came at a price. You want to have divine health? It requires a price. You want to have divine prosperity? It comes with a price. Seed time and harvest shall not cease. Many of you joke about spiritual things. You don't get it. You don't get it. You don't get it. Praise the Lord. The Bible said, Michael and his angel fought against the dragon. And the dragon and his angel did what? They fought back. <laughs> Verse 8, everybody. Everybody, verse 8. No, I didn't hear what you said. Read it again. Verse 8, New Living. He says, NIV. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. Something will lose its place in your body. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Something will lose its place in your body. Yeah. Something will lose its place in your family. Yeah. You've been praying every power from my father's house die. Now you are the power from your father's house that must live. No, do you get it? You have seen the light. And so, you are the power now from your father's house, from your family. You said, affliction shall not arise a second time. A deliverer has been raised. Are you hearing me? We don't know when we pray ourselves into foolishness. Every power from my father's house, die, 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 die. Meanwhile, you are born again, you have received power, and you are from your father's house, and you are praying every power from your father's house, and you are power, and you are from your father's house, and you are here saying that your power must die, 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 die. You prayed it. Jesus said, Behold, I give you power. You are from your father's house. Are you hearing me? And devil said, I love these things. Christians are praying. Oh. <laughs> he said, Lord, you must answer their prayer. You must answer. You forgot. You forgot that you are now the deliverer. Do you understand? How did you forget so quickly? You got born again. You got the scriptures. You went back to your father's house. Somebody say, I am sick. Say, shut up. You are not sick. Come here. I pray for you. You get here. Bam. Go. You are healed. They say, ah. He said, I am the new force here. Are you hearing me? I am the new light here. Praise the Lord. And I am here to shine. Shout hallelujah. And then when they raise prayer points, you say, ah, this prayer may, 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 may be against me. Oh, no, 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 no. You know, you know, you know, when many of you may not know, when Babangida was in power, he was signing so many decrees. He didn't know where he decreed himself out of office. Are you hearing me? 
No, how many of you remember what happened with him now? He decreed himself. That's why he said he has to step aside. No, you, many of you may not know it. You see, Babangida was signing so many decrees. Signing, he was not reading them properly. They got him to decree himself out of office. That was what happened in this country. And then when eventually they said, by the decree you sign, so, 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 so. And so don't pray yourself out of power. That's my point. Don't pray yourself power. Always tell yourself you are the one carrying power. Jesus said, I give you power. I give you authority to tread upon serpent and upon scorpions and upon every power of the enemy. Praise the Lord. Are you hearing me? There are levels. But locate your level and grow from there. Amen. I heard about the story about people that were going to have program in Calabar one time. And then the demonic force there confused the minister. They couldn't find the location. Imagine you were going to have a crusade. You were going to the venue. You are the pastor. They confused you. You couldn't. It was an embarrassment. When our bishop had it, he said, I'm coming. Tell that principality I'm coming. He was angry. He said, at Bishop, when he was getting there, the principality had to run away. Say power, pass power. When they were doing the, the building of um, Benson at Hosea University, launch, doing the launching, yes, people came. They told Archbishop then that that principality is there where they came to bring money. He said, let him bring it. He said, the wealth of the Gentiles is mine. Let him bring it. I'm not afraid. Others were afraid to touch his money. He said, let him bring it. He brought the money, put it on it. He stepped on it. He said, the wealth of the Gentiles is mine. Praise the Lord. Say dominion. dominion. And that is why young people, you're supposed to be on fire. You're supposed to be on fire. You're supposed to have fire. Listen to me. How can a believer say I can't get a job? It's not possible. It's not consistent. There is a job that an infidel is occupying. You need to release that job so that you will occupy it. Are you hearing me? There is a job a wrong person is there and it is your place what do you do you see God said to Jeremiah I have given you the power to root out to pull down take the scripture pull and root out pull and root out praise the Lord the power to get angry use it as a spiritual tonic the the, the power to be offended, to be bitter, use it as a spiritual tonic. Amen. Somebody say, you are not a giver. Instead of you getting angry, he's not the one to make you, that made you to be stingy. Are you hearing me? Somebody say, you don't like to give, you are very stingy. But in your heart, you know that you are not stingy. It is condition that made you to become stingy. So what do you do? Get angry. Amen. Get angry. What do you do? Lord, I have been reproached. I have been despised. Lord, this is not your way for me. You see, many of you enjoy poverty indirectly without saying it. Today is Wednesday. Are you hearing me? Many enjoy poverty indirectly without saying it. If, I, if in a year I can't see what I achieved or what I did, something is wrong with me. No, that is the truth. You, 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 need, to be, you need to be in your spirit. In your spirit. In your spirit, get angry. Care 
Caleb said, it was said by the Lord that the Hebron, he country belongs to me. I'm 85. Give it to me. I will take it by force. Are you hearing me? War broke out in heaven. And God didn't fold his hand and watch. He said, then Michael and his angels, they fought. Amen. They fought. He said, the great dragon was hauled down in NIV, chapter 9, verse 9. He said, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He leads the whole world astray. That's what my Bible says. He leads the whole world astray. Whatsoever is leading you astray in your life must be cast down. Yeah. You know what it means to go astray? From the path. Going astray means departing from the path that has been laid for you. No. Do you understand what uh, is not getting lost? It's a diversion. It's a diversion. You know, the prodigal son was led astray. But after a while, the Bible says he came to his senses. When will you come to your sense and fight? No, when will you come to your sense? War broke out. Let war break out in you. Fight the good fight of faith. Lord, my situation must change. Today, this weekend, this communal service, whatsoever has not yielded to my prayer was yield to the blood. Instead of you eating and chewing on Saturday, you take Saturday to prepare and to fast. Many of you don't like fasting. Twelve o'clock, you have not eaten. Your body is vibrating like a baby. Even some of you, uh, David is stronger than you in fasting. David is uh, five months or six months. He is stronger than some adult. We are checking the time. Ah, it's 12 o'clock now. Uh, breakfast is not ready. Nobody eats his way to victory. <laughs> are you hearing me? Nobody what? Eats his way to victory. So this enemy, today you must bow. Today I must overcome you. They said the devil was pushed down. He said he, the devil lost his place. Whatever that happens in heaven can happen in your life. Are you hearing me? Cancer can be pushed out of your body. Cancer can be pushed. You know, you know, just today as I was meditating, uh, there was a prayer I was praying and then I went back to Matthew chapter 3. Just open that. Let me show you. Matthew chapter 3 verse 12. Amen. Are we there? Matthew chapter 3 verse 12. The Bible says his winnowing fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor. He will thoroughly do what? Clean out his threshing floor. And gather his wheat into the barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. I taught you that prayer here. We pray it also. But how often do you present yourself to the Holy Spirit for this? Clean me thoroughly from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. Lord, clean me. This is your dwelling place. This is your place of abode. Whatsoever that is a stopper in my life, Spirit of God, I found myself just deeply praying that prayer today, just today. I said, Lord, any presence, every presence that is not from you this day, Gather it and let the refiner's fire consume them. I don't care where they are coming from. I don't care what it is. 
But if there be any one thing that stands in the way of the word of God, if there be any one thing that stands in the way of the spirit of God dwelling in me fully, fully, I said, Lord, clean this vessel thoroughly. Thorough cleaning. Make it clean. And let every chaff and every junk burn them today with unquenchable fire. May they not survive your fire. Whatsoever that represents junk or chaff in my life. Lord, I don't want it. I want you to do a cleaning. A cleaning in me, Lord. A cleaning. So that you can dwell in this place with style. So that you can dwell in a clean house. So that you can dwell in a place that is empty and void of every intrusion of the enemy. You know, I saw myself deeply praying this prayer. I don't know why the Lord laid it in my heart. You think that the, the, you think that the Spirit of God will live in the same place with cancer? No, you think so? Do you think that the Spirit of God will live in the same place with stroke? Paralyzing part of you. And so what will the spirit do if the spirit wants to use your two hands? Have you thought about it? And yet, we have the scriptures. We have taught it here. We have studied it here. Do you still remember it? Do you even pray it? I said, Lord, do a thorough cleaning of me. Let nothing be left. Didn't Jesus said when a demon leaves a place, he goes to look for a, another place. If he goes around and he didn't find a place, he will say, let me go back to my former house. And the Bible said when he comes, he finds it what? Empty, clean, in order. Ah, he said this place is even better than what I left. The Bible said he goes to take back seven more wicked devils to enter into the place again because he wants to fortify his day. But Jesus told us that. Are you hearing me? And so, the only way to keep the devil away is to make sure that the fullness of the spirit dwells in you. To, to make sure that there's no room left for any other. To make sure you tell the spirit, take absolute control of this vessel from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. Let there be a domination of the spirit of the word that whatsoever there is not of God will not have any place in this vessel. And I said to you, cancer is not of God. And I said to you, heart attack is not of God. And I said to you, terminal disease, terminal condition, it's not of God. It's not of God. And I said to you here, when you feel what you don't feel, and fear what you don't normally fear, it is an indication that your oil is running low. Are you hearing me? Suddenly when the light is off, everywhere is dark, you are afraid. Your oil is running low. You need a refill. You need a refill. Suddenly, you began to shake because banks were closed. You can't get your cash. Find out your oil is running low. Because your life is not based on cash. No, are you hearing me? Sunday is communion service. <clears throat> Let war break out among you. Let war break out within you. And said, this, this Egyptians I see today, by Sunday, <laughs> by Sunday, by Sunday, I will see you no more. There must be an end. There must be an end. The blood will terminate you. How did they overcome the dragon? No, how did they overcome the dragon? Let's go back to Revelation 12. Praise the Lord. Verse 11. 
Revelation 12, verse what? Stand on your feet. Everybody read Revelation 12, verse 11. They were not afraid to die. They fought as if they had a second life, but they didn't have a second life. They fought with everything. Are you hearing me? They fought without options. If I die, I die. No, do you get what I'm talking about? If I perish, I perish. But what God says belongs to me. Either I have it or let me not live. What joy does God get from you living like a victim? You cry every day. You sing the song of sorrow every day. No, what joy is there for the Lord that you live like that? They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And on Sunday, we're going to have the blood. I don't know how many are determined to triumph. Divine conquest is about conquering. It's about acquisition. It's about getting back what was taken from you. Are you hearing me? Getting back what was taken from you. You get angry with your fellow Christian. You get angry with your brother. You get angry with you are getting angry with the wrong people. They are not the one that put you in your condition. Are you hearing me? It's not their fault that you are poor. It's not their fault that you don't have clothes. It's not their fault that you don't know how to pray. They call you to pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Continue now. Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. It's just to bless the food though. It's just to bless the food. Um, every devil that will not allow us to enjoy this food. I cancel you. Every power that is in this food, I remove you. Every spirit that will make the food not to taste well, I cut you off. And then people that were supposed to eat you, you know there are prayer points. When you hear, you open your eyes and see who is praying again. And then, why are you people looking at me? It's not prayer. It's prayer, but a prayer plus. Prayer plus. But believers' prayer guide, what do you do with it? You put it under your pillow. You put it under your pillow. You put it under your pillow. They overcame by the blood. And the blood is available to us on Sunday. You can overcome anything by the blood. It's a function of your faith. Do you know that nothing puts Christians into trouble more than their mouth? Nothing. The reason why many people are suffering in this country is because they say that this country is full of suffer, suffer. So you become one of the candidates to suffer. No. Nothing that makes believers. Listen. Uh, oh, I have this message. Your word, your harvest. And I'm going to teach it in this quarter. Jesus said, it is not what goes into a man that defies a man. It is rather what comes out of a man. It is what comes out of you that defies you. It is what comes out of you that creates the situation you are living. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You think that there is anybody that the devil does not tempt? You think just because somebody is pastor or bishop, the devil leaves you alone? You are lying. It's even hotter there. Are you hearing? The devil tells you. He said, ah, nobody will be in church. Oh, yes. The devil tells you, ah, do you know how many pastors that have died broke? And you, you've started. Ha! He said, you'll be broke soon. Hmm. 
But the Bible said, resist the devil. Resist the devil. Resist the devil. Praise the Lord. They triumphed by the blood and by the words of their testimony. You too must triumph by the blood. I want to read something that will shock you concerning the blood so that you will know how to prepare yourself. Hebrews chapter 10. I'm going to read this and we close. And then on Sunday, by the grace of God, we can go more into it. Amen? Hebrews 10, 28. We're reading from verse 28. Are we there? Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. The law of Moses was so strong that if you walk against it, the Bible said, with two witnesses, you can be stoned to death. That's how powerful the law of Moses was. Then verse 29 brought up a question. He said, how much more severely do you think that someone deserves to be punished who has trampled the son of God underfoot? Who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified them and who has insulted the spirit of grace? No. This verse 29 is so loaded. It's an insult to the blood of the covenant for you to die of typhoid. Is that in your Bible? The Bible is saying, what type of punishment do you think will be given to somebody that, that treats the blood of Jesus as a light thing? The blood of Jesus is precious. The blood of Jesus is powerful. He said, ordinary Lord of Moses, when you go against it, on the witness of two people, you will be stoned to death. How much more will it be to the person that trampled the blood of Jesus on that foot? How much will it be to the one that insults the blood? To, that insults the blood. A, a royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. Born of almighty God. I sometimes, when I look at the word of God, I marvel that even as even as bad as devil is, when devil is said, when devil is told, God said, the devil will stay and not disobey. No, are you hearing me? When the devil hear God said, the devil will just, ah. God said, <laughs> don't go there. If you are in that, go and read the account of Job. Go and read the encounter with Jesus in Matthew 4. The moment he hears God said, the devil will say, okay. Okay. He has exalted his word above all things. His word is above all things. And that is why when you put the word to work, the word will work for you. The only way to overcome the word is by the word. The only way for you to enjoy life in the world is by the word. The only way for you to rise in the world is by the word. Let me stop before you get confused. You will not get confused in Jesus' name. If you like, Saturday again, eat it by 7 o'clock. Eat it by again, 12 o'clock or 4 o'clock. And then 6 o'clock, you say you are fasting for service. No, you swallowed in the morning, you swallowed in the afternoon. 3 o'clock again, you ate rice. You say now you will fast for the rest of the day. And praise the Lord. Well, let me catch you. Praise the Lord. You are already pregnant with a barn rice. And now you want to fast. What kind of fast you slept off? From 7 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. He said, Lord, today is my day. Today is my day. The Lord will visit me. No, it's not the Lord that will visit you. Are you hearing me? It's not the Lord that will visit you. You've already been visited last night by carbohydrates. Praise the Lord. Seven o'clock, you put your television on. Just because you bought Go TV and you don't go anywhere again. Seven o'clock, your Go TV is on. You will watch Nollywood from morning to the following morning, to the following morning, to the following morning. morning. 
Amen. Amen. Nollywood, you are their fan. You are their fan. You know all the actors and actresses. The dead and the living, you know them. Praise the Lord. If somebody wants to be current, they should just ask you. If they just describe the movie, you will mention the actors and actresses in it. You say, ah, I know them all. Do they know you? No, do they know you? Some people have died on this election. Tinibu, Atiku, Obedian, they are well seated. Are you hearing me? The children of some... Can, did you see Tinibu sitting with uh, Jonathan embracing him? Did you see it? The man is seated well. And yet, the sons of some people have died for them. The sons of some people have died for them. Some are in hospital because of them. Where are they and their sons? In comfort zone. In comfort zone. Are you hearing me? You are in comfort zone. Where is Atiku? In comfort zone. Where is Obi? In comfort zone. Where are their children? In comfort zone. Where are you? In the heat zone. Foolishness. Foolishness. Praise the Lord. I will never be stupid for any man. Me. Me. Royal priesthood. Me. <laughs> Say, God, help me. When I'm fasting and praying for this vision, does any of them come to help me? No. So when their vision is to rule Nigeria, why must somebody go and die for them? No. Does it make sense? Even some of you, football gives you heart attack. Football, that's even worse. Leather with air inside. Leather with what? That madness must stop this year in Jesus' name. Yeah. This is light. You look for where there's light to go and watch football. When was the last time you were reading Bible? They took light. You carry your Bible to go and check where there's light. No, when was the last time you carried your Bible to check where there's light? When was the last time you were reading your Bible? They took light. You carry your Bible. You say no. No. Ah, I must finish this chapter. And yet you say, Lord, help me to understand the Bible. God said, you, you are not trustable. Praise the Lord. It's not the devil that's after you. It's you that's after yourself. Lift up your hands. Say, Father, help me. I need help, Lord. Lord, this weekend is my weekend. As I come before the blood, let the blood produce wonders in me. Anything that will fight me, that will fight my destiny, as they overcome by the blood, even so, this weekend, I must overcome by the blood. Every Egyptian, every seed of Egypt, every substance of Egypt, Whatever it is, this weekend, I terminated them in my life. I terminated in my life. In Jesus' precious name. Take Matthew chapter 3, we just read. Dwell upon it on Saturday. Beg the Holy Spirit. Beg Him that you don't want to be a shadow of what you are supposed to be. Are you hearing me? God put the potential of 100,000, 1 million, 2 million in you. You are in 10,000. And you didn't know it. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Lift up your hand. May you receive that grace. May you receive that grace. May you receive that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Many things will drop out of your body this weekend. 
Many things will dry up in your body this weekend. Every growth will be dematerialized. Many things will be neutralized. The blood will give you a newness. I speak prophetically concerning this Sunday. Whosoever that will take the blood will receive a new life. And everything that does not belong in your body must be ejected out. Some of you after the communion, when you go to the toilet, some things will just come out of you. And that will be the end of it. But you see, I cannot believe it for you. I cannot act your faith for you. It's still up to you to activate your faith to that level. I will not suffer. I will not struggle. If you have never experienced abundant life, say by this blood I will start to experience it. See, I was praying just today also. I said, Lord, Moses lived 120. Moses lived 120. His strength was not abetted. His eyes was not weak or dim. His ear was not dull to hear. I said, Lord, but we are on a better covenant than Moses. And I said, Lord, you are no respecter of persons. What you did for Moses, you are able to do for us, for we, because we are born by the blood. Are you hearing me? I said, Lord, ah, even Joshua was 110 years. Caleb went to war at the age of 85. Do you think he conquered the place and died? I said, Lord, ah, we have a better covenant. We should be full of strength to the end. Are you hearing me? At the age of 120, when I shake your hand, you should, when I shake the hand of 50 years old, he should be crying. You say, your hand is so strong, I say, it has been tested over 120 years. Praise the Lord. I remember one time I went to see my uncle. As we greeted, uh, I went and shook him. He said, wow, he said, the hand is so large. I said, yes, sir, it has practiced. Amen. Amen. You can choose what you want from the word of God. But I have chosen better things from the word of God. He said the number of days of man shall be 120. He didn't say for believers even. God said the number of days of man shall be what? 120. And we are seeing unbelievers living up to 95, 96, 97. No, don't you see them? And so what is the difference? You can never live above your faith. 